y'all it's your girl Eva LeRae and welcome back to my channel all right so before we go ahead and get started I want to do a shameless plug of course this video today is brought to you by natural body beauty my company of course um, so I talked briefly about it in one of my previous videos so I have a company and I actually handmade um, a silk bun the service members all of the beautiful fabulous ladies out there that love to wear their hair in a sleek bun style so i'm currently wearing the soft and silk bun now and like i said previous in my previous video um to be in regs i'm gonna wear this bun i'm gonna make sure that my hair is maintained moisturized and i have like big curly coarse hair so one thing that i just love about this bun is that it keeps your hair moisturized while also keeping it maintained. And I wear my hair in, in this protective style um, all week. And then of course I like deep condition and wash my hair on the weekend. So um, that's where I've been. I've been like reconstructing my first model that I created. And um, you know, of course Bullock has gotten me very, very busy. So I just wanted to get back on here and, and um, reintroduce the bun to you guys. Um, so if you purchase this bun, 5% off. So go ahead and use the code TIMELESSBEAUTY25 and get your 25% off. Um, I've had so many great reviews and so many people love my bun. Um, like I said, I'm really excited for you guys to uh experience this and you know just have a protective style very sleek very professional style for work or you know just something that you want to wear in your hair so um go ahead and go over to naturalbodybeauty.com and make that purchase so yeah i just want to apologize for being gone for so long it's been a really busy time for myself uh, like I said, I've been in Bullock and things have been so hectic, so crazy, but I've had so many emails from you guys and just requesting me to do like certain videos. So I wanted to get back on here and get back to the videos. Also, congratulations to me. I finally made over 200 subscribers. From 200 subscribers so i'm really excited about that i'm on my way to 300 i know that it may sound like a small milestone but i mean i really appreciate you guys watching my videos requesting um supporting me um the feedback the emails i get countless emails asking questions about um the basic training ocs board asvab military life like and if I can help you guys in any way, um, I definitely love what I do. It's just something that I'm passionate and I can get in front of the camera and tell you guys. So, I mean, thank you guys so much for your support. So let's jump right into this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. Okay, so from the title, you guys see that I'm doing a land nav video. So I've been receiving several questions about how to <laughs> be successful, how to navigate, how to get through your fears of land navigation. So land navigation, um, for myself, I would say it wasn't as nerve wracking. That wasn't the most nerve wracking thing that um i thought about when joining but it was one of those eerie things like do i know how to navigate without a gps um i'm a little bit older so i've previously navigated in like the early 2000s with just a road map and, or just um you know you printed out your google's map or your map quest on going on a trip so I'm that that error <laughs> so that's really funny but uh land navigation is is nothing like it but more so in the sense of knowing your surroundings and knowing how to navigate to get to a known point so this video is going to talk about the basis of land nav and how to accomplish that um while being in the military as either a soldier officer whatever basic training um ait any like ocs whatever training you're going through this is the video to watch so stay tuned all right, so I'm gonna start off with going through, and my monitor's here, so sorry if I look to the side. 
um, often I'm, my monitor's here. I can see like all of my notes here. So I'll be going off the notes here. So we're going to go ahead and start off with learning the military lensatic compass. All right. So I have a military lensatic compass, compass and when you do land nav, you'll definitely receive a compass from your cadre. And my compass, I'll go ahead and say it's very high tech. This is the compass that I purchased for myself um, when I was in OCS coming to Bullock or whatever. So I have a very high tech compass. Um, you'll get something similar, but not as high tech. And I'll show you why. So I want to start off by saying that this presentation is only a quick summary of and not comprehensive resource. Um, if you want to learn land nav and fully in detail, I would definitely suggest you know watching this video, but also learning from your cadre. Um, go into more further detail, but this is basically like a crash course and basically getting over your fear of learning land nav. All right, so here is my lensatic compass. So, like I said, I have a very high tech compass. Uh, the difference being I have a gradient illumination uh, chart here. This is something high tech. You won't need this. I can actually detach this with a screwdriver. So don't pay this any mind. So let's not even look at that. And I will post an image of a lensatic compass on the screen here. So you get the gist of what I'm saying. And like I said, I have my screen here. So I don't like name anything wrong. So you guys can get the gist of it. So here on your compass, you're going to have your thumb loop and on your normal compass here, you would have your sight slot and your lens for your lens or a uh, rear, rear sight. So you have like a rear sight post thing hanging here over the compass itself. Um, on the side, you have your base and your cover. So they have like um, lines here for measurements. Uh, that you can use, but definitely I would say on your map, use the um, the lines on the bottom of the map for measurements because they're more accurate than using the lines here. Um, on your compass here, you have your bezel ring. So your bezel ring, and then you have your floating dial in the middle. And then inside you have a short luminous line that's going to be like your highlighted line that's going to show up um, like glow in the dark. And then you have your luminous magnet arrow. I think it's pointing. Yep. Your luminous magnet arrow that's here. The luminous line that's inside. The fixed index line. I don't know if you can tell where that's at, but that's in the inside as well. Um, here on my compass, I have like a, um, a leveler. So basically it tells you when your compass is like completely leveled straight. So like the little mercury dot stays in the middle. Um, the mercury dot will float to the middle of the circle, meaning that you are leveled straight. And then on this side here, you'll have your luminous slots. So here, there'll be a little bit magnifying here and then on your other compass that you guys will probably have it'll be at the bottom here and then this is your siding wire so that's basically your lensatic compass all right so land nav so why do we do land nav so we do land nav so we can track our location we can determine distance we have our sense of direction we know how to read a topographic map like i said in before um those ages of uh, using your maps for directions it's like a fossil thing but still if your comms goes down like your gps goes down and your vehicle if you're in your tactical vehicle and comms goes down and your gps goes down you want to know how to navigate with using just a topographic map so this is um not a dying art but still like it needs to be learned so these basic skills will just teach you how to navigate um, basically through your navigation course that you guys will probably be taking in basic training, AIT, or your commissioning sources. All right, so back to the compass. So for your cover here, your cover, you're going to be using your siding wire, meaning the line in the middle. For your sight, um, use with your rear sight. So your rear sight would be here on your regular compass. On my compass, I have just a, mine is high tech, of course, 
I've been through LandNav several times, but mine is just a line here. But your rear sight, like I said, I'll put the picture up. You'll be using that with your siding wire. Your luminous siding dot, which would be here in here on your compass, which mine is just a magnifying. You'll be using that for low light conditions and night navigation. So I'll go into that more. All right, and then your base of your compass. So your base of your compass, of course, you'll be using for a majority of your navigating. And one of the tricks that I want to show you guys that um, some people might get mixed up for, that's the reason why I have this, um, this stabilizer here with the mercury dot. If at any point when you're navigating and your compass is in a locked position, meaning you're upright, and your compass is not moving. See, it's not moving. It's not moving at all. That means you are locked in. When your compass is more so leveled and you're shooting at azimuth or you're trying to figure out where you're going with your directions, your compass dial will move. So you'll see your southeast, west, north move around. So that's like a really good trick. The main body of your compass is um, definitely something that you want to make sure that's working prior to you starting off land navigation. So in the base of your compass, you're going to notice your numbers with your north, south, east, west. That's going to be your floating dial scale. So that's these numbers that are inside um, 0 to 360 degrees of a circle. So that's basically what you're using to navigate. Um, a key to remember is that 0 is going to be always 360 and they're after um i'm not sure how people get that mixed up but uh yeah it happens okay so we're going to start off with the sighting of a lens static compass so the first method is compass to cheek and um this would be the most effective method to use um so i'll go over this method and another method as well but like i said um my compass has a leveler so I don't really use this method, but it's still a really good method to start off with. So with the compass to cheek method um, for taking or um, targeting your azimuth bearing, you're going to uh, basically just grip your compass like so, and then wrap your thumb around your fist. It's kind of easy for me to show you this way. And then you're gonna be looking from your rear sight. Like I said, on your compass, you will have your rear sight here. I don't have mine and then I'm going to be putting it to my cheek to get my direction here. This definitely levels you for, um, levels your compass and levels you to the direction in which you need to be going. So when you're doing your compass to cheek method, your rear sight is up, your um, sight wire line is up as well, and the way you can tell that you are leveled is this line through your rear sight shows the line as well through your compass, on your compass from your uh, siding wire through here. So you're gonna position it through your cheek, get it leveled, and in your rear sight, you can actually see the compass because you have a magnifying through your rear sight that's magnifying the compass down below at the base. So that's how you do compass stitching. All right, and so the next method is going to be the center hole method. I use this because of course I'm more comfortable with it and my compass has the um, level with the mercury bubble here. So I can tell when I'm completely leveled because my mercury bubble goes in the middle. But for yourself, you're gonna position your hands like so. You're gonna remove your thumb from the uh, thumb holder and you're gonna make sure you cross like a T, so one on top of the other, like so. You're gonna place your fingers to the side and making sure that you're covering your base is at it straight. I notice that it's not as straight because I have the string holding here. And typically, you'll have your string or your um, some sort of 550 cord attached to you because if you lose this compass, it's gonna be a bad day. <laughs> but um, this is as straight as possible as it would go. It would be attached to 550 cord, attached to myself. Um, so yeah, I won't lose this at all. And then I'm going to be holding in this position like so. And I'm going to have my, my shoulders, my elbows 
positioned as close to my body in a center hold. I'm gonna make sure that my mercury bubble is, and I lift it up, is in the center here. And then I'm just going to navigate, and I'm on my, my um, chair, so it's gonna spin. And I'm going to navigate like so. Right here, I am 270 West. And for this center hold method, I'm going to actually put this slide up on the screen. So, you, so the center hold method for following an azimuth bearing, first you're gonna use the center hold method to hold the compass to your body, like so, like I did previous, shoulders in, uh, elbows in tight to your body. You're gonna turn your body till desired azimuth is aligned with a black index line. Hold this azimuth. So this example is 25 degrees. Without turning the compass, rotate your bezel ring till the luminous bevel, bezel line is aligned with the north arrow. Then, once your bevel is set, leave it there. This is basically till you are ready to change heading. Then start the process over again. Keep the north arrow aligned with the luminous bevel line. Proceed forward in that direction of the desired azimuth of 25 on the black index line. All right, so let's talk about math. So the topographic math is just basically a graphic representation of what the Earth's surface looks like when it's drawn on a scale, um, when you're seen from above. So you're gonna use certain colors to depict vegetation and water and buildings and certain structures of that nature and um, basically put that on a map and then you're gonna read that from a map. So basically, um, contour lines, if you see brown, that's gonna be contour lines. If you're gonna see black, that means like man-made features, roads, trails. If you're gonna see blue, that always means water. If you're gonna see three uh, green, that means vegetation, like grass, any vegetation, trees, that such. Red usually means highways and land grids. Um, but there are two other colors that you may or may not see, and definitely a lot of times you won't see because maps are just black and white. And yeah, you're gonna see uh, pink, which means like built up areas of civilization, and purple means like the map has been updated previously, but a lot of times you get updated maps, so no need to follow these two minor colors. And the most important, the map scale. So on the bottom of the map, it will show you what map scale you will be using in conjunction with your protractor. So this is really, really important because like I said, on your protractor, it has uh, one through 20,000, one through 500,000 thereafter. And this is what you'll be using to scale your map. Okay, so back to map. I'm gonna go over like a few key things on a map that I think that you should know that are really important. Let's go over contour lines and I'll post that photo here. So contour lines are contour interval. The contour interval is the distance between each contour line. The contour interval is found along the bottom edge and the center of the map. The intermediate contour is a brown line on a topographic map and represents a line of equal elevation. And the index contour is a bolder, wider brown that has the elevation value marked at the various intervals as a part of the line. So basically on here, it says that, like it said, um, the darker is going to be your index that's marked with 700 feet. And then your intermediate is gonna be that brown line, the thinner brown line that represents a line of equal elevation. It says that B equals 740. So the one in between A and B would be what if it's going? So it would be 720. So this map is gonna go in 20 feet interval. And the reason being that we learn contour lines is because that's gonna tell you what elevation you're stepping into. So if you see a map and it has elevation that's gonna be marked up and the lines are gonna get more shorter and more skewed, that means you're going up steep or down steep. Uh, be very cognizant of these areas because if you try to dead reckon, and we'll go over that, you will definitely get lost. You'll get lost. It'll be typically dense vegetation or it's going to be so steep of a hill you don't want to like get yourself in a dangerous predicament to where you're just going to get like completely lost or hurt yourself. So yeah, just keep that in mind.
So alrighty, let's go over like a few terrain features and I'll definitely post all of these up here as well. So the five main features are ridge, hill, saddle, valley, depression, Three minor are going to be spur, draw, cliff, and the two supplemental would be cut and fill. All right, so here's a picture of your ridge. So on a map, that's what it will look like. And the fist is basically how we just teach um, like basic trainees or AIT soldiers um, how to differentiate. The hill would be in the circles. The saddle would be in this image here. The valley would definitely be in this image here. The depression would be in this image here. The spur would be in this image here. The draw would be in this image here. The cliff would be in this image here. And the cut and fill, which is something that you can see, but um, a lot of times it just means like railroad.